Good afternoon, gardening friends. It's now a little past 12.30 on October 27th, and it's time for another update. First of all, let's take a look at a couple of the uh, veggie planters, a couple of the edible planters that I've got here. Um, I had planted probably about a week ago new seeds in four of these. There's two to the left of the mum. Actually, there you go, the mum. There's two of them to, to the right and two to the left. Um, it looks like I've got something sprouting in this first one. Let me see if I can. And refocus. Let's see how well that works. I don't know if you can see that, but I've got something sprouting in there, which is nice. And to the left of the mum, uh, I've got some more stuff sprouting, uh, especially right in here. Um, although some of them are growing so fast, I'm kind of wondering if that's actually a plant or if it might be some uh, of the broom corn that kind of dropped in there because i got a plant not too far away. Uh, also, I cleaned up the broom corn plant and harvested some of the seeds, and I actually had a little container sitting on top of these boxes, so I might have dropped something, although that was just yesterday. So I doubt they would grow that fast, but we do have some kind of sprouting going on. We'll just keep watching it. The petunias have uh, bounced back really nicely, so I'm happy with that. And as you can see, one of the tomatoes is almost ripe. And there's another one up a little further there, which is getting there. It's orange. Um, and actually down below on this particular tomato plant, I've got one of the two that's on there is turning, so that's good. As for the bigger plants, uh, once those turn, there's nothing left on the yellow pear tomato plant, so I'm just going to scale everything back after I harvest those, which will probably be in a day or two. Now, out here in the south courtyard around the pool, I wanted to give you a little bit better shot of this because I keep going over it and I keep showing it you when it's in shade, and so you can't really see it. There's not a whole lot to see, but there it is. That's, uh, I guess, planter number three if I label them clockwise. And out here in what I used to call the nursery, uh, planted some, oh, cosmos in that one there, and poppies in the other three, and that was a couple of days ago. So, now that you're sufficiently dizzy, we can stand still and look at the progress on this uh, white pot for a few seconds. I think that's it for today. Good morning, gardening friends. It's now October 30th at 10 a.m. And I got a few little projects to do. But if you look here, the standard shot that I usually start with is a little different. This morning I got up, I looked at my tomatoes, I said, okay, it's time to harvest those, and I've cut them way back. So maybe you can see uh, with the, I don't know how well you can see the early girl in the back. It's really short, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and pull it. Um, and the yellow pear tomato is down to really small. Let's see if I can zoom in for you here. So that's what's left of that one. Maybe I'll leave it. We'll see if it grows. Um, I've got a few different projects I want to do in the garden today, but let's give you a couple of quick updates first. Of uh, the uh, four different sets of seeds I planted recently, it looks like the mesculine is starting to grow on the one on the right there. And I'm getting quite a bit of growth uh, for the spinach that I planted there. So that's the change here, and we'll update you as things develop. Okay, so that's the first project done, and it may be a little hard to see because of the lighting. But I had these two pots here, which the plants were pretty much dead in them. So I went ahead and put, brought them back to the patio. Um, actually, they were on the patio. Uh, I sifted the soil and replanted with apartment mix and a couple of zinnias from the uh, germination experiment. So you'll see those disappear from that particular episode. And now back on the patio, I've decided to actually remove that screen in the background. That means I'm going to have to remove the birdhouse and the bird, the hummingbird feeder. But I have a plan for getting the hummingbird feeder back up, and I'll have to decide what to do with the birdhouse. Okay, everything's been stripped out, which may be a little hard to see, so I'll give you another angle. 
uh, and I've moved the hummingbird feeder up there at least temporarily and now it's time to remove the actual screen okay this angle is probably a little bit better for you to see there's a frame and a screen attached to it so here we go sometimes when you work on projects you forget little details like the fact that the bottom part of that frame is actually nailed to the planter so I'm going to have to grab a screwdriver as a pry bar and a hammer and get that apart and then I can take the final screw out and remove it and there it is removed so looks a little different lets a lot more light in um, even this view kind of gets washed out by the light Let's see what it looks like from the traditional view well still kind of washed out but there you go that's what it looks like from the traditional view I'll put the other petunia back and I got a bunch of cleaning up to do and breaking down that screen into its component parts so I can put it in a smaller storage area all right well I'm still kind of debating what to do with the big planter here but one thing I've figured out is um, I'm probably going to want to plant more than one thing or I'm probably going to want most of these sections back and the tomato is kind of iffy what it's going to end up doing now that I've got it way back um, I've already pulled the early girl and so I've got a yellow pear left and what I'm going to do is go ahead and transplant that into a smaller little pot um, and I'll just keep watering it and see if it, it survives and if it starts to grow if it does then I can transplant it back at some point but that'll give me a few weeks to try some other crops well I got the uh, tomato transplanted finally after the plumber showed up and kind of delayed things a little bit but he's a good plumber I'm not complaining he just kind of showed up a few minutes earlier than I expected I thought I was going to get it done before he arrived anyway that's done I got something else interesting to look at I've been planting out some small pots near doors because they didn't really have much other use so I've got this and a couple by the office and this one I decided to do the sifting technique before I put the seeds in and I don't know how well you can see it but the water is still sitting on top it's not actually sinking into the soil so I'm not sure how to interpret that um, I'll watch it and I think it may actually be going down just really slowly so we'll see this may have finally backfired on me at some point uh, on this particular one but uh, anyway good morning and happy Halloween folks it's uh, October 31st and it's about 10 a.m. and I got a little bit more done yesterday and then we're gonna get back to work today um, what I have managed to do is straighten out in this big planter uh, well let me actually just sort of pick you up and show you uh, I got that one sort of repacked and ready to go. Um, I need to keep processing. Um, pulled everything out. Um, I'll show you real quick. I did in that one on the left there, the pot on the left, I actually uh, transplanted all of the plants that were actually in the back on the left there. Or I guess, well, basically the furthest one from us. That had those plants in them. I'm not exactly sure what I've got here. It looks like it's either the Swiss chard or um, Malabar spinach. And the Malabar is actually a climber, so I don't know. Um, but I, bet it, I went ahead and put them in that pot. So I now got the entire big planter cleared, and we're going to get to work on planting things. Okay, folks, for those that may not have been following from the start, I just wanted to give you sort of an idea of how big each one of these uh, sections of the planter is. Now actually when I originally designed it there were this would have been two sections. I pulled out some of the dividers so instead of having eight sections in here I have four and I just wanted to show you I have completely filled a five gallon bucket with what was in there and that wasn't a hundred percent filled uh, and this is what still remains so I mean we're probably talking on the order of eight to ten gallons in each one of these so anything I plant in here could pretty much get pretty big and actually what I'm planning I'm planting in some of these sections could get quite large um, whether it produces fruit or not I don't know um, I've tried before I'm going to try again uh, well I'll show you when I get to it alright folks well the uh, planter is now for the most part empty and I filled another bucket up too, probably about 60%. So that's another three gallons. 
Although realistically, um, I don't think five gallons means all the way to the very, very top of the planter or the the bucket. So it's probably actually more than eight gallons. And uh, if you look at this one here, it wasn't filled 100% to the top of its capacity. Um, the soil does settle after I've turned it. Um, but so I'm probably talking again eight to ten gallons and that's quite a bit of soil and as it actually turns out with turning the soil and with some of the transplanting I did yesterday it looks like I'm actually going to need to go out and get some more soil to get this topped off. Okay folks it's a few hours later and I finally got this all planted out so let's go over what I put in so I have it documented. Uh, in the first section I have acorn squash in the next section I have kabocha squash. In the third section I have uh, little finger carrots and uh, Easter egg radishes. Uh, I put the radishes pretty much, let me see you and try and come out, sorry I'm off uh, tripod here, but I pretty much ran two rows for the radishes and in the middle I ran another row for the carrots. Uh, in this last one here I have mint oregano and blew over there tarragon let me just move those out of the way I pretty much did three rows mint oregano and tarragon um, the kabocha and the acorn squash I pretty much put uh, six of them one in each corner and two in the middle and did the same thing for the kabocha. So that's all documented now and we'll start watering it and see what happens. Well now here's something that I noticed a couple of days ago that I forgot to mention. Uh, I had planted the um, artichoke plants in all three planters and if you go back and look you'll see I was all excited. I pretty much built the planters for the artichokes. <laughs> but uh, they just didn't seem to be doing anything but I noticed that there's a little bit of new growth on this one and quite a bit of new growth on that one the third planter number three because I've been numbering them clockwise one two three uh, third planter doesn't have anything I thought they'd all pretty much died but I'm not sure if it's because I've got so much of the broom corn growing in here uh, which may be fixing the nitrogen and helping or if it's just the fact that we're starting to hit the cold season so but I'm happy. If this thing continues to grow, um, I won't care about the rest of the plants in the planter. <laughs> anyway, that's the update on that. Good morning, gardening friends. It's now November 2nd at about 9.30 and it's about 68 degrees. And I wanted to give you one final set of updates before I uh, put this all together and post it. So, let's take a look around. All right, well, first of all, we've got the uh, petunias there, which are still growing and are kind of filling in that little gap. Next to that, you'll see a bunch of broom corn kind of laying, uh, laying up against it. Uh, some of my broom corn and my uh, pot out by the corner of the patio outside uh, was knocked over. I don't know if it was somebody knocked it over or the wind or an animal got in here. One of the squirrels got curious. Don't know. Um, but they were kind of laying down and broken, so I just brought them in here, stuck them in a, well, basically leaned them up there so that they would dry out so I can harvest the actual seeds. So that's that. And in these two pots we've got some transplants. Uh, the smaller one towards the front that actually says it has basil in it. I need to pull that sticker off. Um, that one has the uh, Swiss chard or um, spinach that I had up in the big planter. Uh, pulled them out, put them in there, been trying to water it and keep them alive. They're mostly looking like they're wilted over and like they're well, like I'm going to lose them. So not a big loss if I do lose them. Uh, planted enough other stuff around here to kind of make up for it. So that's that. Behind it is the yellow pear tomato which is a little wilty but not too bad. Uh, gave it a bunch of water last couple of days since I transplanted it. It seems like it's starting to take hold now so I think I'm good there. And here we have the um, what is it? It's a bush uh, well whatever. The other tomato plant. 
Um, I've got one turning red back there that I'm sure you can see. I've got another one that's green. That's, let me see if I can point these out. There's another green one there. And I thought that was going to be it for this plant, but then this morning I noticed there's two more up here, which I think you can see, that are starting to grow. And there's another one up here, which is just, it's like a micro tomato. Um, so it's still putting out tomatoes. I, I think, you know, once you pull, once you harvest a tomato, it puts more energy into creating uh, baby tomatoes, if you will. Um, anyway, so I've got more tomatoes to come, and that makes me a nice, happy camper. I also noticed this morning that the uh, petunias, the uh, purple ones, are dominating over in this part of the garden. There are still some red ones you saw already, um, but the purple ones are dominating here. So what I did was I actually separated the three boxes that were side by side. Um, I think the uh, purple ones were getting so big that they were kind of shading out the the plants would be red ones so by doing that hopefully I've created a situation where the red ones will kind of bounce back uh, I think I just didn't give them enough room to begin with and now it looks like I've got sprouts in the masculine box here so that's a good thing and the spinach over here is starting to look like grass but uh, it's growing and so I guess I'll wrap up with a shot of the white pot here uh, with a number of different things growing in it and we'll see which one of them which ones decide to climb and where they go actually some of the ones that I thought might have been nasturtium um, they're looking like something else so we'll see what they turn into but I think that's it for this episode I'll wrap it up until the next time